name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Qasim saw this dream on January 30th, 2020. In this dream, I was inside a house in which many other people were also present. While looking around, my gaze lands upon a man who I didn't recognize at first, but then I realized that I have seen this man before. This man is seated on a chair against the wall. Upon careful inspection, I recognize that this man is Imran Khan and he seemed to be busy with his work. Eventually, I get occupied in my own work. A few moments after, I recalled that I have tried my best to reach Imran Khan and share my important dreams. And now that I have this opportunity, I ought to take advantage of it and speak with him. I reach closer to Imran Khan and I tell him that I have seen many dreams regarding you and I have also tried very hard to get the message of these dreams to you but I was not successful. Now that I have this opportunity, I would like to share a dream with you and I want you to ponder about this dream and when you have time, come and meet me so that I can discuss the dreams in greater detail as my dreams are coming true just as I have seen them. I narrate that on July 25th, 2018, a night before the elections, I saw in a dream that you are elected as Pakistan's Prime Minister, but you struggle and fail to fulfill the promises you had made to the people. On the contrary, you are forced to withdraw and regress on your promises, different from what you had previously planned. I have also seen the reasons to why you have continued to fail in my dreams. After saying this, I step back and suggest that contemplate about what I have said to you and when you get a chance, take some time out to meet me. I then move away and it eventually gets dark. I am in the same house and I see that Imran Khan is walking with a few other individuals. Upon seeing me, he approaches me and asks me, So, tell me, what dreams have you seen? I tell him, take some time out of your schedule and give me adequate time so that I can properly explain these dreams to you in detail. In that moment, I notice that he is not taking much interest, so I start explaining a little more of my dreams. I revealed that I have had more dreams about you. For instance, I've seen that the people surrounding you do not let you work, give you incorrect advice and misguide you, and they report incorrect information regarding the progress of their work when in reality, the opposite is happening in Pakistan. Within your party, there are opposing members who have formed internal rifts and groups, and the coalition members are also pressurizing you. I also state that I have not made up any of this information. I have seen all this in my dreams and have uploaded my dreams as I saw them on YouTube on earlier dates. If you wish, you can verify this information yourself and I have also seen in my dreams that Usman Buzdar will cause the most damage to your party and hurt its reputation. Upon hearing this, Imran Khan realizes that I have proof for what I say, and he starts taking more interest in the dreams. He proceeds to further discuss with me. He asks, what other dreams have you seen? Nearby in the room, I saw two chairs, and we both sit on these chairs as I begin to explain my dreams to him. I say that, in the dream I saw on July 25th, 2018, I see that you have become the Prime Minister of Pakistan, but you encounter many difficulties and problems that you are unable to fulfill your promises. Internal party rifts, grouping, and pressure from the coalition also hinder your activity, and you become fed up of these circumstances. You also say, why are these people not letting me work properly? Nevertheless, aside from these things, the most detrimental action that you have done was when you bowed down to prostrate to the shrine in Pakpatan, as it was shirk. And remember that you yourself said that you will not bow down in front of anyone except Allah. Upon hearing this, Imran Khan interrupts me and states, No, I did not prostrate to a grave. I just kissed the floor and people have taken this incorrectly and propagated against me. I responded by saying, No. Two days after you had prostrated, I saw another dream 
in which I was shown that even if someone bows, like performing a ruku, in front of anyone else except Allah, that person has also committed shirk. Recall that you yourself used to say, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. And just to become the Prime Minister, you bow down in front of someone other than Allah. This is the reason why you no longer have Allah's help and you have also not repented or asked for forgiveness for your actions. I also saw in another dream that you prioritize on addressing the greater issues in Pakistan and reduce the current account deficit. In doing so, you forget to focus on the increasing prices and inflation which increases abruptly and reaches a point in Pakistan where you are not able to control it despite your many efforts. In this situation, the citizens of Pakistan and the opposition advise you that the economy is falling and not functioning correctly, but you ignore them and only trust the people you are surrounded by. I have also uploaded this dream on YouTube at an earlier date. With regards to Usman Buzdar, I saw this dream in 2014 that you and your party members are traveling on a truck. The driver of this truck is not experienced and has not driven a truck before. I warn you that this driver is not suitable for the job and your truck is important. That person will crash your truck somewhere to which you dismiss my warning saying, no, this driver is good, just watch, he will drive this truck very well. After a few moments, my warning comes to pass as the exact same thing happens regarding what I had previously warned you about. The road you were traveling on was leading towards a sharp roundabout and the driver, Usman Buzdar, got frightened upon seeing the sharp turn and instead of slowing down, he speeds up the truck and crashes into a nearby building. In this particular dream, I saw that many of your party members get injured in this accident and some even die. In 2019, in another dream, I was shown that this truck driver is in fact Usman Buzdar and he is accompanied by another person in the driving seat. Now you can examine your own situation and see that this dream has come true as you cannot replace this driver nor can you continue to rely on him. Also recall that when the elections were near you began to fear in your heart that what will become of you if you do not win this election and not become the Prime Minister of Pakistan. You were also fearful and worried when your party did not win enough seats to form a government. Thus, you were forced to form a coalition government. I was shown all this in my dreams and I was also shown that you should not have formed a coalition government. In fact, you should have only relied and trusted on Allah's help, which you didn't do. Upon hearing this, Imran Khan responds back, The government cannot be formed unless you have a majority of the seats. I answered, No, you were fearful in your heart that you may not be able to win enough seats again. I then asked Imran Khan, How many seats did your party win in 2013? He replied back saying, We had 30 seats. I responded by saying, No, they were slightly more than 30. To which he responded by saying, Yes, it is possible. I cannot recall well. Then I asked him, How many seats his party won in 2018? He replied, Around 115 seats. I explained to Imran Khan that Allah helped you in increasing your party's seats by four folds, despite you committing shirk at the shrine. You should not have formed a coalition government. Instead, you should have held back, just like you used to say that you will only form a government if you get the majority of seats, otherwise you won't form one. With regards to forming a coalition government, you did not rely or trust in Allah's plan and you continued to face further difficulties and challenges. During this period, Allah's help was not with you and you were oblivious to the shirk you had committed. While our conversation was happening, I observed that someone else had come and sat next to Imran Khan, but I was unable to see who this person was due to the dim lighting. But I noted that Imran Khan is very focused and is listening to me with great attention. Then I tell Imran Khan that if you had trusted Allah and had not formed a government, as you had said, then the opposition would have set up a coalition government. This would not have gone well with the public and the citizens of Pakistan would have increased their trust, respect and resolve for you as they had not experienced your governance yet. Eventually, 
the true face of the opposition and their failures would have come to light in front of the public. They would have realized that the same people have returned to governance, have caused a rise in inflation, and the public would have witnessed their misconduct and the implementation of law and order. This would have given you the opportunity to recall the election, resign from the assembly, and reset the government with an increased support from the people and their added trust. Perhaps during a re-election, you would not get the simple majority, but you would get around two-thirds majority. Nonetheless, you did not trust in Allah, and your Iman and faith weakened. Reluctantly, you compromised and formed a coalition government. Now, instead of the opposition being critiqued, your governance is critiqued. You should see what the common Pakistani today has to say about your government's failures. What have you achieved? What respect will you have if you lose your government today? Or if the chief minister of Punjab is changed? Or if something else happens? People will remember you as the worst prime minister in the history of Pakistan. They will recall your story, saying, Once, there was Imran Khan who came and made many great promises. But alas, he failed miserably. At this point, I see that Imran Khan is listening to me very attentively and concludes that the way this person is talking about me is unlike anything I have heard from anyone else before and he expresses his content with a smile. I tell Imran Khan that I have made many attempts to find a way to reach you and share these dreams with you. I shared my dreams with everyone else and even gave a message to those closest to you but everyone turned me down. If only any of those people had shared this message with you, you would not have been in the difficulties you face today and even now, you have an opportunity to fix your situation. Imran Khan then asks me, how can all this be fixed? I respond and say, first and foremost, you should provide subsidies to the people of Pakistan, reduce prices on basic food items, reduce taxes, reduce price of fuel and electricity, and give support with funds to the most impoverished. If you continue doing this for three to four months, you will see that the people's opinion about you will change. The people will be relieved with the low prices on basic items, the reduced taxes, and improving conditions of their businesses and earnings. In doing this, you will garner the trust of the citizens of Pakistan. And after three to four months, you should break the government assembly. Since the citizens of Pakistan will trust you more, when the elections are held again, it is likely that more people will vote for you and you can possibly form the government again with a majority. Once you have a majority government, there is no chance for anyone to stand against you, such as the likes of Pervez Khatak, who is pressurizing you with his threats of breaking apart with his group. If you had two-thirds majority or more, no one would dare to threaten your authority. Upon hearing all this, I see relief in the eyes of Imran Khan, and he regrets that he did not hear these suggestions before. However, after hearing my suggestions about lowering the prices for three to four months, he interjects, stating that, the IMF will not allow me to reduce prices and taxes for three to four months. I respond by saying, don't be afraid, you are still worried about what the IMF will do and the kind of pressure you will encounter on an international level, you should repent and ask for forgiveness for the shirk you have committed and place your trust solely in Allah. The IMF can't do anything. At most, the IMF will stop giving you further loan funding. What else can they do? But if you do not trust in Allah's plan, you will not be successful. Imran Khan pays great attention to what I have to say and he expresses relief in hearing the resolution but he also regrets that he had not heard about my dreams earlier. And the dream ends there. <laughs>